Hi everyone, Rebecca here from the Nutrition and Herbal Collective. Nice to be with you here today. We're talking about supplements. And I've gotten this question a few times from interns. Where do I start? Where do I start? My program, um, my graduate degree program did not cover supplements. I want to start using them. I don't feel confident with it. How do I begin this journey of using supplements with clients? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I just want you to know you're not alone. Um, a lot of people feel this way in the beginning. So it can be helpful to have some tips and ways to get started navigating this whole area. Um, one thing I want to say is that when I was in school, I had teachers that said, herb teachers that said, if you only have 10 herbs in your herb toolkit, in your herbal first aid kit, you can do a lot of work with just 10 herbs. The same is true with supplements. Take any problem or health goal, whether it's healing gut permeability issues or um, reducing inflammation or helping somebody with gut motility. There are 30 different supplements that you could give to somebody that could move the needle on their particular issue. Healing is not a narrow path. There are many different paths that people can take. So it's important to keep in mind that there's not one perfect supplement for every scenario. There's often multiple ways that we can go about healing. And the other thing to keep in mind before you start recommending supplements is to get your priorities clear. We are nutritionists. Um, or herbalists, as a nutritionist, our main modality is food. And a supplement is just that. It is a supplement to the diet. It's not the core of what we're doing. And, you know, our clients are not going to overcome physiological imbalances while they're still partaking in negative dietary inputs, particularly when those physiological imbalances are driven by negative dietary or lifestyle inputs. So, it's important to keep that in mind, um, food first, food first. And the same is true whether you're an herbalist, you know. Um, we can definitely nudge people with herbs and we can nudge people with supplements, but if lifestyle and wellness factors are not being addressed, then we're not gonna be as successful as we could be. Now, when it comes to supplements, whenever we're giving a supplement to a client, there's really two main questions. Is this the right supplement for the client? And is this a high quality supplement? And both of those are really important questions. We're gonna dive a little bit into, is this a high quality supplement? Is this the right supplement for the client? We have to take into factors such as unique needs of the population that they're in, whether they're pregnant, breastfeeding, if they're old or older in an elderly, population above 70, 65 above, or if they're a child, infant, what's their body weight? Are they underweight? What are their nutritional needs? Are they meeting their nutritional needs in their diet? Um, <clears throat> what factors in their life are acting as an anti-nutrient or reducing their levels of a particular nutrient, such as drug nutrient interactions, I highly recommend getting a membership to natural medicines database to check drug nutrient depletions, drug nutrient herb interactions whenever you're recommending a supplement. Um, our recommendation for our interns is to avoid supplements and herb that have a moderate interaction rating of a level of evidence of an A, B, or C. Um, moderate or major, moderate or major interaction with a level of evidence, A, B, or C, according to the Natural Medicines Database. That is a good rule to follow. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes that'll be overly cautious, um, but I think it's better to be overly cautious than underly cautious. Always better to play it safe. Um, okay, so those are the two questions. Now, is this a high quality supplement? Let's dive into that a little bit. So I would recommend one of the best um, tools and strategies you can use to start diving into this is to, is to make a list of supplements you know and trust. 
I would start a working Google document or Google Sheet um, to get started with your list. And just start with what you already know. There's probably a vitamin D you like, you have a fish oil you like, a probiotic or two, a multi or two, um, maybe you have some magnesiums you like. There might be a handful of herbs, um, vitamin C, et cetera. Start with what you already know um, and then pull from your notes from school. Maybe you had a trusted mentor or teacher or supervisor who shared some wisdom on some good quality supplements. Add those to your list. So start with a working list. You know, what's the brand? What's the dose? What's the supplement? What's it used for? And, you know, it could be a chart or an Excel sheet or just a list. And I bet you already have at least 10 things on that list. Um, and we actually, in the Nutrition Herbal Collective, we give our interns a list to start with so that they have a good starting place with supplements that we know and trust. Okay, now how do you check supplement quality? Well, first off, I wanna dispel a myth that's out there. The myth is dietary supplements are not regulated. That's the myth. In truth, dietary supplements are regulated. They may not be regulated extremely well, but they are regulated. And um, the FDA has set out good manufacturer practices, which need to be followed. Um, and that they're called GMPs. And the GMPs for dietary supplements um, are actually not as strict as pharmaceutical GMPs, but there are companies who've actually voluntarily follow pharmaceutical GMPs for dietary and herbal supplements. So that's um, a good thing to know because if a company is doing that or say they're doing that, that's good information. Um, in theory, the FDA could knock on any supplement company's door and inspect facilities and processes to make sure that they are following GMPs. Now, how often or whether or not they do that is unclear. It is clear when complaints are made about products or um, that products have been pulled from the market. Um, a good example is there was a product out there about 10, 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, called PC Spez, I think it was, and it was a prostate cancer um, supplement that ended up having hormones in it that was pulled from the market. Um, then we get like Ma Huang, which was a very useful Chinese remedy um, and, I, and very useful for bronchitis, but it was misused in the sports industry. And there were a lot of some deaths and, and side effects of that. And that was pulled from the market, which of course was very sad for the traditional Chinese medicine world because that was a very honored plant, but it was misused. So that was pulled. Um, now, Aside from GMPs, there's actually three different organizations that verify that the end product supplement is what it's supposed to be, um, that it's not adulterated, that it's not contaminated with heavy metal or PCBs, that the levels or that the levels of lead are allowed and not above what it, the FDA has set out. Um, so these three independent organizations are what we call third-party verification. And some companies do third-party verification themselves or third-party assays to analyze their products. Um, but again, we're taking the word, and they may actually publish certificates of third-party verification on their website. Um, but these three independent organizations, they, they actually publish that information themselves. So Consumer Lab is one example. I actually have a yearly membership with Consumer Lab. It's about $65 a year. And I can, they do reviews and they do a lot of different reviews on from protein powders to magnesiums to St. John's wort, you name it. They don't do a comprehensive review. review. You're not gonna see every company on there. And they do tend to focus on consumer-based companies versus practitioner-based or professional companies. Um, and you'll see sometimes the consumer-based companies actually pass the test better than the professional companies. So just because it's a professional company doesn't mean it's better. There's also NSF International and US Pharmacopeia, which is called USP Verified. Um, so those are the three independent organizations 
you know, there are some child like, so let me just break it down for you. So take the USP, the US Pharmacopeia, which has a USP label, USP verified label, and they work with a number of different companies. Most of the companies that are USP verified have a lot of money behind them um, because it costs a lot to get that verification. Kirkland, which is the, the brand of Costco, is USP verified. Um, I mean, that's great, but we know that there are that Kirkland uses ingredients that are unfavorable at times. Take um, CoQ10. It might be ubiquinone, which is not as bioavailable as ubiquinol, but at least we know that the product is what the product says it is. It's the right dose. It's not contaminated or adulterated. And we can trust the label because it's USP verified. Take Kirkland curcumin. You know, we know it's 95% curcuminoids. It meets the standardized, standardized extract, you know, requirements. However, it's not like Gaia Pro's curcumin, which is in a whole plant extract. So it's not just the curcumin. It's turmeric with a standardized amount of curcumin. And we know that um, antioxidants tend to have a synergistic effect with other plant compounds. Um, Usually there is synergy when we take um, a constituent of a plant in its in its whole plant form. So that's kind of one of the challenges, you know, with some of these third party verifications is that um, different nutrients can come in different forms. And while cyanocobalamin is a solid B12, it may not be as optimally absorbed as a hydroxy or adenosylcobalamin. Um, so it's great to have third party verification because we can rule out some of the issues that come along with quality of supplements, which is our food allergies listed. Does the product say, does it have the dose it says it has? Is it adulterated? Is it contaminated? If we can get good quality supplements, then we're already eliminating many of the potential problems we can deal with with supplements. So Good to know those three organizations, Consumer Lab, NSF International, and U.S. Pharmacopeia. Now, I have some tips on ways to get started getting to know supplements because, again, there's just like hundreds of supplements out there. So where to begin? Here's some tips that I found useful in my own career. Number one, I would have useful books around. Um, I like Alan Gaby's Nutritional Medicine, which is now, I believe, in its second edition very useful supplement dosing per condition in that book. Braun and Cohen's Herbs and Natural Supplements is in its fourth edition. And that is a cool herb book. It's not a supplement book. It's not an herb book. It's both. And there's monographs on different supplements and herbs with um, a secondary re you know, review of primary literature. So summary of the research. Efficacious, efficacious dosing as well as potential safety issues. That's a good book to have on your bookshelf. Um, very early before I got my master's degree, I worked at Smile Herb Shop and I got to know so many supplements through working there for two years. Some of my interns have worked at Village Green Par Pharmacy in Bethesda. Um, and there's other experiences out there where you can get to know supplements by being around them talking to clients, talking to consumers, talking to colleagues, and looking at labels. So when you go shopping at the health food store, spend a little extra time in the supplement aisle and analyze those labels, ask questions, figure out where the answers are to those questions, um, calculate doses, look at the actual dose of the ingredients and figure out what that means for, for you or for a client. I would definitely join newsletters for companies that you are already familiar with. Maybe it's Designs for Health or Apex or Gaia. You know, get on those lists and join free webinars. A lot of companies are doing free webinars to promote their products. And even though they're going to be providing you biased information because they are trying to sell their products, they are going to be educating you about different ingredients and help build your knowledge base. It's just important to be aware where is this information coming from and what does this person gain um, you know, from educating me? So I wouldn't rely solely on 
supplement companies to learn about supplements, but it is a good place to also learn. Um, when you see new clients, ask them to bring their supplements to the visit, whether it's in Zoom or in person, and read labels and look at what they're taking. Also check out NIH's Dietary Supplement Label Database. NIH's Dietary Supplement Label Database. Really useful resource to look up the label on any supplement. Sometimes it's hard to find those labels online and you wanna see exactly what your client's taking. When you talk to your clients about their supplements, ask about their experience. Um, sometimes people are taking things because they just heard it was good, but other times they've had really miraculous things or beneficial things happen from taking a supplement. That can be super useful. Attend conferences. Some of my favorite conferences for learning about supplements, Expo East and Expo West are great to attend, not just for supplements, but for also food products. FENCI, which is the Academy Nutrition and Dietetics Annual Conference, has a wonderful expo um, as well. And the Personalized Nutrition ANA Conference, as well as the IFM Conference, also have a lot of supplement vendors. Um, last year at the ANA Conference, Fullscript gave out a huge bag of supplements, and I fell in love with a couple of new ones just from walking around at the conference and talking to people, as well as the free samples that I got. Once you have selected some companies that seem high quality to you, I would set up meetings with their representatives, whether it's Zoom or in person. You can get free samples, you can learn more, you can find out about their manufacturer practices. Some of the questions you wanna ask are, where do they source their raw materials? Where are their products made? Are they outsourcing production or are they making supplements at their facility? What testing do they do? Are they conducting their own research? Do they do third-party testing or verification? These are questions you can ask. Drill, the, drill people and you know, ask those questions. Sometimes you don't even know why you're asking the question or what the answer is, but you also have, there's two levels of knowledge, right? There's like the analytical, logical brain of like, what are they doing? Tell me about that. And there's also your gut intuition about um, how you feel about that company. Um, so now that you know a little bit about um, kind of ways to learn, I did want to dive into Fullscript. Fullscript is the online dispensary I use um, for recommending supplements to clients. I do also have my own herbal dispensary here in my office, which I love using and custom formulating herbs for people. Um, and also I have another herbalist, Andy, who works with me in my clinical practice. She custom formulates too. So I'm gonna come into full script here and share my screen. My computer is being a little wonky, so I'm hoping it does not prove difficult. Folks are not always familiar with the advanced functionality that Fullscript has for searching for supplements because sometimes like, you know, you want to give ubiquinol, you know, that's the you know best quality CoQ10, you know, you want to give it with a diet with fat for optimal absorption. But maybe you have a client that has a limited budget and you want to give CoQ10 with magnesium and you're wondering, is there a product that does that? So here I am, uh, delete this one. I was probably creating a recommendation there. So I'm in a new prescription. I haven't selected a patient yet, and I'm gonna go to add supplements and resources. So if you look at this little toggle, this little um, icon over here with filter, if you click that, you have a lot of options for filtering your results. Only show favorites, that would be your favorites. Most prescribed is a great one because that means um, it's a very popular item and a lot of other practitioners are prescribing it. If you have somebody on a budget, you could go price low to high. Um, you can search for particular brands. Um, 
you can include ingredients. So that's what I wanted to do actually for this sample was let's put in ubiquinol and let's put in magnesium. Two products, not a lot. Oh, they're both discontinued. Let's try that again. Maybe there is not a product that has CoQ10 and magnesium. Um, let's actually try CoQ10 and see if we get a better cert hit. Oh, now we have 106 products. Um, so we're coming up with a lot of multis here and um, a lot of mitochondrial support multis, general multis. Um, let's see what this proglyco SP is. Yeah, it's pretty much a multi. Okay, so that maybe is going to be a hard one to do. Let's try something else. Let's try CoQ10 and carnitine. Oh, let's actually try CoQ10 and Hawthorne. Two heart, two heart supportive, blood pressure lowering nutrients. We've got 14 products. And Ultra Nutrient is a multi heart health by Thorne. I like Thorne. It's a quality company. Ooh, okay. So it's got taurine, potassium, magnesium, Hawthorne, CoQ10. Potassium's not ideal for everyone. That has a little more ingredients than I was looking for. Um, I'm, I don't want to give Raulfia. Let's look at CVRSQ. Lots of ingredients. Um, kind of more than I was looking for, although I do like Natura Health products. For a while, they weren't on full script, but now they're back. Vitanica is Tori Hudson's line, and it really specializes in women's health. Um, again, a lot of ingredients. I'm not finding a, a dual ingredient product. Um, yeah, so anyway, you get the idea. So it does help me narrow down my search, though, by being able to add ingredients, exclude ingredients. Maybe if I wanted to try and exclude um, multivitamins, I could always go exclude vitamin A, and that gets me down to nine products, right? So lots of options there. The other thing that can often happen is you want to... Um, let me actually get rid of these ingredients here. And that one. Okay. And you can also search by form. This is super helpful if you're working with a child who could only do chewable or drops, gel, um, liquid, lozenge, basically any of the non capsule forms. Um, maybe you want to stay away from powder because it could taste bad. So you can use these um, forms to actually narrow down what forms you're getting. The other thing is you can select allergens. So if you, you, want, you have somebody who's celiac, you want to make sure that things are gluten-free. Um, and you can also search by certification. So they do have um, NSF, which is one of the third-party verifications that we talked about. You can include that to see only products that have the NSF label. So there are a lot of different ways that you can use the search functionality here to narrow down your search results when you're looking for supplements. Um, and a lot of people don't know about that. So wanted to give you that tip as well. We've covered a lot today and there's a lot more. I mean, this just touches the surface at the, you know, at the Nutrition and Herbal Collective, we do reg regular education about supplements, herbs, quality, developing protocols for different conditions. We have our seasoned practitioner course, which is exclusive for mentorship members, and that has some modules on herbal medicine and supplement quality, safety, and utilizing supplements. So feel free to reach out. Um, info at Nutrition Herbal Collective or private message us on Facebook or Instagram. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening.